Welcome to the FRM part 2 credit derivatives audio class. In this video we are going to look at four topics. CDS, portfolio default swap, CDS indices and variations of CDS. So it's very important to understand CDS, baskets, CDS and uh, indices that are based on credit default swaps because they help us to hedge credit risk and these are derivatives that could be used to speculate or hedge credit risk. The most fundamental security and the building block of all these credit derivatives that we are going to see is credit default swap. The CDS is similar to an insurance whereby the protection buyer makes a premium payment to the protection seller in the exchange for a contingent payoff in a default or other credit event. One thing that we need to understand here is that it's not always default, it, it could be a credit event as well. So many variation on CDS exist including asset default swap, equity default swap, total return swap and credit link notes. We'll look at differences in payout and risk transfer between standard, NF to default, first to default, and senior and subordinate baskets. So the first and elementary instrument here to understand is the CDS. So as the name suggests, a single name CDS is a bilateral derivative contract between a protection buyer and a protection seller. Although the name here swap suggests that the security is is a contingent claim and uh, uh, it, it functions more or less like a put option. The protection buyer will make a pre-specified payment to the protection seller over a pre-specified time period and the protection seller is liable for making the protection buyer whole if a credit event occurs. So it's highly leveraged instrument you are just paying the premium whereas uh, if something happens then the protection seller is liable to give the whole part if uh, a credit event occurs. Hence the single name CDS operates essentially as an insurance contract but a different key is that the protection buyer need not actually own the underlying asset. So it, it's, not all, it's not compulsory at all whether you hold that asset on which you are buying protection. So you can, you can just buy protection or you can buy CDS even though you don't hold it. So in the option terminology the protection buyer who is a long put is short the credit risk and pays the premium or the CDS spread which is the upfront or the running over time to the protection seller who is a short port who is long the credit risk. If there is no credit event by the contract expiration the protection buyer loses the premium paid on the other hand if there is a credit event during the term of the contract the protection seller will make a contingent payment to the protection buyer. Thus the credit event is analogous to exercising an in the money put option. So it is the responsibility of the protection seller to compensate the protection buyer for a credit event and uh, we'll look at what those credit events are. Those could be downgrades or uh, different ways of defaulting. But there are two standard settlement methods here. One is the cash settlement, other is the physical settlement. Under the cash settlement, the protection seller will make one-time cash payment to the protection buyer in the amount of par minus price of the credit event. That is par minus current market price. On the other end of the contract specified settlement then the protection buyer delivers the underlying reference to the protection seller and receives a, uh, a cash payment equal to the power value. So we have to note that both methods of settlement are economy equivalent because the protection buyer is made whole. Alternatively the protection buyer may enter into a digital swap where the payout is binary that is the payment form a credit event is fixed and known in advance independent of the actual impairment. So therefore it is possible that the protection buyer will not make a whole payment. On the other hand if the post default amount is significantly high the payout on the digital swap may exceed the economic loss on the bond. So hence the digital swap is a special type of cash settlement and uh, uh, here we can decide the amount that we are going to pay so it's, it's something different from the whole thing. The credit default swap contract must specify the underlying references in advance so that both parties will agree when a credit event has occurred. The CDS will typically specify the reference name 
which is the specified issuer or obligator of the underlying asset. The term of contract may be narrowed to specific asset or issues as agreed upon both parties. So there could be a lot of uh, customization that could occur here. Ownership, recovery, right and liquidity concern are issues that may arise after a credit event. The key difference between CDS and traditional insurance is that the standard insurance contract, the insurer the insured must own the underlying asset that's being indemnified whereas the protection buyer in the CDS may or may not own the asset. First assume the protection buyer owns the underlying asset and the reference uh, name explains the credit default. Under the physical settlement, the protection buyer delivers the underlying reference thereby removing itself from the asset recovery process and the protection seller receives the recovery rights as its legal owner of the reference. On the other hand, if the contract specifies cash settlement, of, then the protection buyer retains recovery rights as the owner of the reference. So when comparing a CDS to a bond, a difference arises regarding payment before and after a default. So in case of a default, the protection seller in a CDS has received premium at least uh, until the event date. On the other hand, bond holders have no guarantee of receiving accrued interest following the default. So another critical component of CDS contract is the prior definition of a credit event. So that, that that's a big term in itself. The International Swaps and Derivative Association Master Agreement provide great flexibility in triggering payments after the protection seller after payments from the protection seller to the protection buyer, the definition of credit events spans a spectrum of hard events such as failure to pay principal interest or failing or filing for a bankruptcy or it could be a soft event as well like uh, insolvency, downgrades or repudiation of an obligation. Typically the contract will impose a materiality clause so that a small failure to pay does not constitute a uh, a credit event. Finally, the most contentious potential credit event is the restructuring of existing debt claim. Restructuring are not easily defined but tend to relieve the debt burden of the borrower by extending the maturity and or reducing periodic interest payment. Clearly, protection buyer would like this to be considered as a credit credit event whereas protection seller would not uh, uh, so which clarifies the importance of proper documentation. So. Uh, these kind of restructuring are little trickier to define. So th that was a little introduction to wh what CDS are. Let's now move to the portfolio credit default swaps, which is topic two. So portfolio products in the most general case provide protection against one or more defaults on a pre-specified -def pre set of single name credits. There are several important variations on the portfolio structure depending on whether the protection buyer seeks out payment each on each default that is a basket C CDS or on the nth default only after a certain uh, loss level is breached example a senior basket or, or or up to a certain level like subordinate basket so in a standard basket CDS the protection will receive compensation payout for each and every default that's the standard basket because in theory the protection buyer can receive payment equal to the basket size the spread is likely to be prohibitive rather Rather, the buyer will specify some subset of loss event it wants to protect against. A common basket structure is the nth to default basket where the protection buyer fully absorbs the first n-1 defaults and only receives a compensatory payment for nth default. Consider a bank that has set aside capital reserves to cover n-1 default but may seek additional protection by purchasing a protection via nth default basket. The first to default basket protection buyer will receive a compensatory payment from the default for the first default regardless of the name or the site. Perhaps the basket will only pay on the first default. The structure terminates after the first credit event. So these are three things that I just talked about. First is the uh, the standard basket where each, each uh, missed payout is going to be uh, taken care of then there is nth to default where only after a particular number of default uh, you will be compensated and the first to default where only the uh, uh, you will be compensated only for the first one so similar to the second to def similar could be something like a second to default basket which will provide compensatory payment for the second default in the reference name so no payment is made here for the first default so this basket structure is much more interesting because of the important role correlation will play in the pricing of the CDS spread. For example, suppose two credit events are highly correlated, uh, which could be uh, 
from an exposure to the same macro industry factor a, def a default in one credit is likely to be followed with a default on the other credit hence the payoff on the basket is more likely than if the credit events were independent so this talks about uh, correlation between one after the other default now let's check out what are senior baskets and subordinate uh, basket CDF so in senior basket and subordinate basket CDF payoff function are a bit different than the previous basket structure whereas the standard and n to default basket pays off are based on number of default the senior and subordinate basket payoffs are a function of cumulative loss level specifically the senior basket will not receive any compensatory payment until a pre-specified loss is breached this concept is analogous to insurance proceeds over the deductible in a standard insurance policy on the other hand subordinate basket will receive a compensatory payment for cumulative loss before the below the pre-specified loss level hence the subordinate basket payout uh, represent the deducible in a standard insurance contract so th th that was a little bit about senior baskets and subordinate basket where uh, 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 the senior basket will not receive any compensatory payments until a predefined loss is reached and uh, uh, the subordinate basket will not receive payments for a cumulative loss uh, below the predefined loss level. Now we move to CDS indices and it's, uh, it's an interesting instrument because many portfolio managers use it to hedge the risk of their portfolios. So we we we'll look at the composition and use of iTrack CDS indices. iTrack is one company that provide uh, and track these indices and make these indices so any CDS index is just a special case of more general basket structure the typical index will be equally weighted and differ only by its constituents in 2004 the existing index providers decided to join forces and establish the Dow Jones iTrack CDS index the increasing popularity of trade derivative and the index structure has led to many new regional indices which could be based on countries or sub indices or other variation. Two popular indices include High Vol Index, which is the 30 high, uh, widest trading cred credit in ITREX Europe. So we, we will look at high volumes for, uh, we'll look at uh, uh, the credit default swap that are high in volume so that are more traded. So that's high volume. And the crossover index where uh, the rating is no higher than uh, BBB minus. We also focus on the uh, investment grade and just uh, being into the investment grade is the last trend so there are some uh, instruments which which would allow or which would be the CDS of only the investment grade bond so they would they would be more towards uh, that line between investment grade and non-investment grade so the the broadest iTrack index uh, include 125 equally weighted credit based on pooling of market uh, polling of market participants the indices have a finite life 5 or 10 years and then terminate in additional new role would occur after same one so that there are several indices perhaps with different constituents trading at the same time it's important to note that these indices represent tradable products and not just benchmarks so you can actually buy these indices it's not a benchmark that uh, you cannot uh, buy them and it's uh, just like a GDP figure where you cannot buy something called a GDP and get, a re get the return so this is a tradable product and not a benchmark as investment sought broader credit exposure beyond a single name the demand for indices has increased uh, in in a huge way so there could be various variation and now I'm moving to the fourth topic on your screen which is the variations of credit default swap so there could be various types of swaps which could which could be asset default swap which could be equity default swap total return swap and credit link notes and we are going to look at all of them so the asset default swap function as a single name CDS when the underlying reference is an asset backed security as opposed to a special reference the market for ABS CDS has increased substantially because as we know that uh, ABS uh, are a lot being traded these days the equity default swap clearly implies, implies that the buyer is seeking protection on an equity security of course equity cannot default by definition but rather the security provide compensation if the stock values fall below a level like 70 percent of the current value hence the equity default swap more uh, closely resembles a deep out of the money put alternatively the payout could be binary uh, if a effectively fixing a recovery rate of X percent for example if uh, there is a loss of 40% uh, uh, but they'll not pay 40% they'll just pay 10% or something that's predefined whereas we move to the total return swap 
and the total in the total returns swap one party will typically pay a LIBOR plus a spread in exchange for a total return on an asset or a reference portfolio for a stated uh, notional period. The total return consists of all cash flow, dividend, coupon and the percent change in the asset value. Intuitively the protection seller is receiving all the associate return with reference to asset. It must be uh, also be bearing all of the risk. So unlike a CDS where the protection seller is liable for credit event only the total return swap bears all the risk which could be a market risk, downgrade risk, interest rate risk and not just uh, the credit risk. So that's, that's the total return swap as the name suggests it's uh, total. The specific contract must delineate the important terms including notional principle, reference assets, uh, methods to terminate, uh, determine the value of reference basket uh, analogous to the CDS contract. So those would be in the very same ways. The final structure here that we look at is the uh, uh, credit link notes. So uh, the easiest way to understand the credit link note is to view it as a straight bond with an embedded credit default swap option on the bond issue. Hence the issuer of a CLN is the protection buyer and the note holder is a protection seller. So in return for bearing the credit risk, the, no the note holder receives an enhanced coupon. Hence if the credit event occurs, the issuer may withdraw interest or principal the CLN eliminates the counterparty present in a credit default swap. The CLN is fundamentally different from a single name CDS contract because the note holder has already advanced the funds to the protection buyer via principal payment. In addition, CLN is still a bond and must be marked to investor via uh, formal procedure. So that was about the CLN. And that would do it for this lecture. Thank you.